Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the Migration Update for April 11th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. I mentioned yesterday that a reporter from Channel 8, WROC, came out to the Hawk Watch and was interviewing me about turkey vultures, and there is a link to the video now up on their website, and it actually aired on the 11 o'clock news last night and was replayed on the news again today, so check out that video. It was a rainy morning, but Kim and I still went out to the Braddock Bay East Spit. You can see visibility wasn't that great, and it was a bit windy as well. In addition to a good number of tree swallows, there are also a handful of northern rough-winged swallows, which you see here. They're brown on top and have a dirty look to the upper breast. The highlight of the morning was this shorebird. This is a dunlin, and dunlin are sandpipers, and their most distinctive thing is that they have a black belly when they're in breeding plumage. Here we have a very small songbird that was constantly moving around and had black lines through the eyes. This is a kind of kinglet. This is a golden crowned kinglet. And this is a male, and not only was he showing off the yellow of his golden crown, but also that fiery orange as well. From the east spit this morning, we only had 31 species due to the poor visibility. Next, we headed over to Braddock Bay Park, where the rain was tapering off, but it was still foggy. You couldn't see the other side of the bay. Visibility improved throughout the morning. However, it remained overcast. We did get a little bit of sunshine in the midday period, just very briefly before it became overcast again. The winds were easterly, but by the afternoon, they were swinging around to a more southerly direction, and it became quite warm in the afternoon as well. Here we have a male red-winged blackbird down in the marsh, and if you read tips about bird photography, you'll almost always read the tip that you shouldn't always crop really tight on the bird. Sometimes it helps to show a bit of the habitat too, and I think this photo here really shows that example well. Here we have a large and lanky black and white raptor with a black line through the eye. This is an osprey. Here's a large grayish tan bird with a long straight neck and long beak. A little bit of a red cap visible and long trailing legs. This is a sandhill crane. Here's a large dark raptor with a white head and white tail. This is an adult bald eagle. And they don't normally hold their wings up in a V. This one was flapping and I just happened to catch him in this sort of turkey vulture-like posture. But in a glide, his wings would be flat. Here we have a small hawk with a long tail and long rounded wings. We should be thinking accipiter. And we look at the shape of that tail, we see it's not only squared off, but also slightly notched. That combined with the size of this bird and relatively small head, kind of a big eyeball on a smaller face. This is a sharp-shinned hawk. And if we look at all the messy vertical brown streaking underneath, we know that this is a juvenile sharp-shinned hawk. Here we have a small swallow that was brown on top. We see some of that brown here on the head. Overall, it's white underneath with a very distinct brown breast band. This was our first of season bank swallow. Here we have a large two-toned bird with a red head with white bill. This is a turkey vulture and today we only had less than 100 turkey vultures. So a bit fewer than the past couple days where we've been seeing thousands per day. Here we have two large woodpeckers perched in a tree. We see a lot of spotting underneath with a black bib. We see some yellow tail feathers as well and the back is a tannish brown with black stripes. These are northern flickers, and we're right in the peak of the flicker migration and starting to see good numbers of them. And we know that both of these are males because they have the black mustache on the face. Here we have a large dark raptor in a sore. We see a large head. We see overall it's dark underneath, but there's a lot of splotchy white, especially in the wing pit areas. And we see an even trailing edge to the wings because all of the feathers are the same age. This is a juvenile bald eagle, so one that was born last year. Here we have another hawk with a long tail and long rounded wings, so we should be thinking accipiter. We see orange barring underneath, so we should be thinking adult sharp-shinned hawk or adult cooper's hawk. Looking at the top side, we see that this bird has a hooded appearance because the dark on the top of the head extends all the way down the back of the neck and onto the body continuously. We do not see a pale nape. And we see that the tail feathers are all pretty much the same length, giving the tip of the tail a very squared off appearance. That combined with the small size of this bird make it an adult sharp-shinned hawk. Here we have a group of five large birds gliding in on flat wings. And here they are going by. This was a group of five sandhill cranes. 
Here we have another male northern flicker migrating past. Notice the white in the rump area and also notice the yellow shafts to the feathers. The variety of northern flicker we have in the eastern U.S. is the yellow shafted variety, whereas out west they have the red shafted variety. Here we have an adult bald eagle gliding high overhead. Notice that when they're in a glide, they sometimes tuck their wingtips back a little bit. And ask yourself, would you be able to identify this if you only saw the silhouette and didn't see the white on the head and tail, which often you don't in the field against an overcast sky? And I'll give you a hint. Look how large the head is. That's quite a large head. Here we have a very lanky raptor with a long tail and long, somewhat pointed wings and an owl-like facial disc. This is a northern harrier, and from the overall white and gray plumage with the black wingtips and black band to the secondaries, this is the adult male plumage. Here we have another osprey, and notice how lanky this bird looks, and also note that it's carrying a fish. Here we have a hawk with a long tail and long rounded wings. We should be thinking excipiter. We see a very squared off tip to the tail because all of the tail feathers are around the same length. We see a small head. And overall, this bird doesn't look lanky. It looks a little bit more compact, a little more roundness to the wings, a little bit of bulging to the secondaries. Those are all good field marks for sharp-shinned hawk. And taking a look at the eBird list for the hawk watch, today we had 61 species. I had two new species for the season today, which were Dunlin and Bank Swallow. And taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 73 turkey vultures, three bald eagles, nine northern harriers, nine sharp-shinned hawks, one cooper's hawk, one red-shouldered hawk. For falcons, we had three American kestrels and one peregrine falcon for a total of 100 migrating raptors. That brings the April total to 12,305 and the season total to 20,425. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking cloudy and windy with rain, especially in the morning. A morning high of 61 degrees Fahrenheit falling to near 50 and strong southwesterly winds at 20 to 30 miles per hour. So it's likely that rain will delay the start of the count. After that, I think it's a little bit hard to predict. Today we had southerly winds, although they were more to the southeast. And we didn't really do that good. It, was, it remained gloomy and the flight just never really picked up. So I'm a little concerned that tomorrow, if it remains gloomy, even with those favorable southwest winds, that maybe we won't get a big flight, even though it's our best wind direction. So we'll see what the exact conditions are tomorrow, but I'm a little hesitant to say it'll be a great day, even though we do have those good southwest winds. And just to give a quick visual of what's happening, this is the frontal map for tomorrow morning. We're up here in this area in Rochester, New York. We had the warm temperatures today because of this warm front that pushed through. But by tomorrow morning, we will have had a cold front pass through as well. But because of the positioning of the low pressure, um, we'll have the winds going counterclockwise around that low. And so for us here in New York, that'll be a southwest wind. And that's a little bit different from a lot of the big days that we get where we'll get the big flight on the southwest winds that are between the warm front and the cold front. And often we'll get a big push of birds ahead of the cold front. For tomorrow, we're in post cold front conditions, but because of the positioning of the low, we're still going to have the southwest winds. So will that bring the big flight? We'll have to see, but it's looking like uh, it's going to be pretty rainy and dreary for much of the day. And for Saturday, it's looking cloudy and windy with rain into the afternoon, a high up around 50 and very strong west-northwest winds at 25 to 35 miles per hour. So it's a less favorable wind direction and extremely strong. I would only expect light migration and I'll either be counting from the car or hiding behind the platform due to those strong winds. And for Sunday, they're calling for more rain, a high around 50 and light southerly winds. Wouldn't expect much of a flight on Sunday. All right, well, there's a lot of unsettled weather coming up, a lot of rain, a lot of strong winds, a lot of clouds, and not too much sunshine. But we'll keep an eye out for tomorrow, and maybe we'll get a surprise big flight on those favorable southwesterly winds, as long as it's not too rainy and gloomy. We'll be out there to find out, and I hope to see you out soon at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.